Hi there and welcome to my channel. Today's project is for the Vicky Beauty and Design team. And I want to show you this layout that combines a lot of mixed media with her beautiful All the Good Things collection. But let me show you what I did. To start with, I am using her foundation paper and I have actually prepped it with a little bit of yes. And all I'm going to do is I went into this layout with no plan ahead of time, uh, not even a picture in mind. I just wanted to have fun with the medium. So all I'm doing is doing what I love, creating a watercolor um, background for this page. And you're going to see that all I'm doing is scribbling the yellow crayon onto my craft mat and using some and watering down and using some plastic uh, packaging just to move it onto the page. I'm creating sort of like a big, at the moment it looks like a big blob of color on the center of the page. And I'm also going to use it to create sort of like a small little triangle of watercolor at the bottom. And sorry, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I'm battling a really bad cold. So this voiceover is being filmed while I'm coughing in between. My apologies. I might be choppy at times. So as you see right now, once the yellow set a little bit, I play with a few colors in between. And I did not feel the orange, but I actually like this blue. One of the reasons I love this blue is because it has some of that um, deep blue that comes in the neutral set. It's like a navy blue. And I love it because it's making it really vibrant, very blue. So, so if you have a chance to pick up Vicky's uh, neutral crayon set, go ahead. It's a great um, investment. It will help you mix and create vibrancy and also different shades of the colors. Uh, but let's go back to the layout. Uh, what I did is I same um, technique that I used for the yellow crayon, but I also added some splatters, and that's it. Now, as I am building this color, I see that I need to bring more vibrancy onto the yellow, and also I need to extend it a little bit more. So all I'm doing is again just playing with the yellows, stretching it a little bit more, using the watering, uh, sorry, the packaging technique, not the watering technique, sorry, and uh, just to add more of this little blob onto the page. I chose to add teal to this page because it's a color that in between the blue and the yellow and I thought it would complement and actually also contrast the yellow. So I am using the teal that comes in the cooler set, in the art crayon set with some of the blue. I added a little bit of navy to start with and not loving the shade that I got but I'm not either hating it so I'm leaving it there. But you're going to see on the next layer, or going to say the continuation, because I didn't add enough, I'm going to add a little bit more of the light blue uh, art crayon, just to give it like a more teal look to this uh, color. And all I'm doing again is scribbling the crayon on my craft mat, adding some water, and then using the packaging technique to transfer it onto the page. And while I'm doing that, I'm also making sure that every single color that I am created, I'm bringing a little bit of that color to the bottom corner of watercolor at the bottom of the page. I want to make sure that all the colors that are at the top of this page are also at the bottom because they have to look like a com like a combined uh, page and they have to match somehow. And the thing that is going down right now is just watercolor. So I'm going to make sure of that. To actually m connect them together, what I'm doing is you see right now, I'm using my water brush to create droplets onto the paper. And all I'm doing is Think of it as if I was shaving or flickering paint off the crayon onto the page. And what it does, it does create a droplet onto the page, but it also creates this really fine mist of color. It's really fine. I don't think you see it or appreciate it here on the video, but up closer and in the pictures, you're going to see like a really soft shadow. And if I do that to both the top and the bottom triangles, then the shadows are going to combine thus creating a like a cohesive look. And then I set it aside to dry. While I was drying, I pulled these two pictures from my son playing with the dog. And he is wearing a blue shirt. And I think that to pop the blue, I need to bring more yellow. So I trimmed around a half an inch from the top corner of the page where the watercolor is. And I stitched it to the east side of the shine brightly paper, making sure that the bottom corner was not stitched. I'll show you in a little bit why. But now that I have that, that set, I'm going to start playing with more techniques, with more medium. And my choice was ink. And Vicky's circle stamp from her latest release, one of my favorite stamps ever. So versatile, so much you can do with it. And in this case, all I decided to do is use the smallest circles, the one that's full of polka dots, and the one that looks like a smush circle. 
to create just images within the watercolor. And for the yellow, I am choosing to use orange. It's not that you cannot appreciate the shape um, here, but once I go to the teal and blue, you're gonna see it better. And all I'm doing is adding the images, no rhyme or reason, there's no set pattern. All I'm doing is making sure that some of them intersect, some of them are not fully stamped, and that's not because I could not stamp, it was intentional. I wanted something that looked messy. I wanted, as you see right now, there's no lines and there's no definition on the, on the layer. So all I'm doing is, to help me do this, uh, I'm just stamping and putting, it depends how much pressure I'm putting onto the, the stamp while I'm putting it down. And uh, that's it. Um, some of, you're gonna see some of the images do cross into other colors, and I'm okay with that. Um, it works fine. And I'm also adding the same stamps to the bottom corner. Like I said, I wanted one cohesive layer. Now, I pulled the small little scribble stamp, uh, the circle stamp that comes in the set, and I'm gonna use it to add these circles onto the page using two different colors of archival ink, or any pigment ink uh, that will dry fast. And in this case, I'm using black ink, and the other one's called either watering can or watering tin, but it's this dark gray. Sorry, and my choice of the two colors is because I wanted to add some dimension using ink. And you're gonna see that I choose to stamp circles. Some of them might be intersecting, some of them are not. Some of them are not fully stamped based on the amount of pressure that I put on the stamp. And that's okay, that was the way I wanted to work around it. And at the same time, one of the reasons that I use archival ink in this case is because when you stamp to a yeso page, the ink tends to stay fresher longer, so that means that it doesn't dry as fast. So just be mindful of this when you stamp on a prep page, so when you touch it, you don't smoosh the color. Now onto the next technique and uh, layer onto this page. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing more vibrancy to the inside and some shading to the outside of this circle. For that, I'm just scribbling some of the corresponding crayon inside some of the circles and some outside of the circles and just using my finger to diffuse or to move the pigment around it. This is just gonna make that little spot brighter and I'm loving what it looks like. It's giving some definition to the circles. Some of them are popping, some of them look like they're, they're hidden. I'm loving this, how this looks. And this is one of the reasons why I use archival ink because I knew it was gonna dry faster and I wouldn't have like a, a mess when I did this technique. And I'm doing the same to the bottom. Like I said, whatever I'm doing to the top part of this page, I'm gonna also use it at the bottom of the page because I wanna make sure they look the same. Once I'm done with the yellow, I'm gonna move on to the teal. And for the teal, I'm actually put a little bit of gray, um, also crayon. And along the way, you're gonna see that I'm, um, my, it starts to look dirty. And it's not because I didn't intend it to look like that but my finger got really stained from moving between the two crayons. So I decided to bring in a wipey to, um, sorry, a baby wipe, I call it wipey, to clean my finger in between. And that actually helped uh, to make some of the color more vibrant because my finger was uh, moistened by the liquid and the baby wipe. And um, it made it more vibrant and easier to diffuse the color inside the, um, the bubbles in this case, if you wanna call, that's what my husband calls them. And you're gonna see that it, as, as I continue, all I'm doing is in between, I am touching the baby wipe just to um, kind of moisten my finger. And as you see right now, I tried to actually use uh, the wipe to move the pigment inside the circles, but it started to take it away. And I did not want that. I did not want to take away paint. I wanted to add vibrance, I wanted to add color. So what I'm choosing uh, to do is actually dip my finger, like I said before, and then move the color around. But if you if you do art journaling, and I do, I love to do art journaling on my Bible. This is a great technique. If you use a uh, Vicky's crayons and then you use a baby wipe on it, oh my God, the results are so nice um, to try. And I'll probably pop in one of these days and show you what I did. Uh, but let's go back to this layer. And again, like I said, that was it. Um, love what it looks like right now. Uh, Love the effect, love those little pops of color, uh, the saturation. Now this next step, it was an experiment, something that I love the way it looked, but when I try it again, I'm making mental no notes, and actually I've made a note 
and a piece of paper of what not to do. So first thing, I wanted to bring texture onto the page and I wanted to bring black. I wanted to puncture that black. And for that, I decided to create my own modeling uh, paste using Vicky's watercolor and some of her uh, uh, glaze. And I'm using the iridescent glaze. And I'm, this is a, an old Heidi Swap uh, stencil. And all I did is mix the two together, the iridescent glaze with the black watercolor. The color was perfect, but it dried really fast. So it has to do with the binding, the binding agents in on the, um, the glaze and the watercolor. It dried really, really fast. And you can see it as I like, start to literally scrape the paint of the plastic. And I know this, I've sped up the video for, um, like the process for the video, but it really dried really fast. Uh, maybe if I add some water into it, but I don't want to add water. I just think I need to add more glaze to it. But this is the final uh, background. I love it. One of my favorite backgrounds. You know, it comes time to embellish. And I'm going to take advantage of the one, two, three numbers that come in Vicky's All the Good Things foam thickers. Um, and also the black um, alphas to create the title. And these two pictures are of my son taunting the dog with one of his cookies. And he didn't think the dog would jump that high. And the third picture in this series is actually my son being knocked down. So it's like a big blur by the jump of the dog. So I thought that one, two will help. And three was just the memory. And that's what I brought to the story. So you see me right now I'm doing is I'm just adding a layer of paper behind each of the pictures. I'm taking advantage of the 7x10 paper pad to add just a layer of paper behind each of the pictures. And then I'm using some of the frames and some of the watercolor uh, stickers to add more layers to help me also pop the numbers on them. One of the things, remember, that I said I'm doing to the bottom corner is I'm adding this circle frame to the bottom corner that we did not stitch. And that was just going to help me unite the circle theme in this uh, layout. Once that was done, a few more... Um, embellishments nothing major i wanted to keep it very simple i just added a few circles and uh some watercolor stickers some of those enamel dots and then i added lines of journal one of the things i do is i'm using a uh, vicky's stamp because he has uh, the rotary stamp it has this uh, set of circles in it and i'm just using archival link just to add some of that to the um, to the page i think it's going to marry the theme together after that i use the watercolor the black watercolor again I water it down just to add some splatters of, uh, think of it as the black ink we had at the end, to this page. I wanted to continue that messy look, and I love it. Uh, this is it. I love this page. Like, I, honestly, guys, I love this page. Um, I love the techniques I use, the pictures of my son. I love the story. Yay, yay. I did uh, multiple pictures, which is something I don't do. And uh, I just love all the techniques, all the mediums. I love the colors. I love how vibrant it is. Honestly, guys, check out Vicky's stamp. It's amazing. You'll be amazed at what you can create with it. Uh, even though she says it's not like, you know, high-level art, artist uh, quality, it's great. There's so much you can do with it. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. I would love to help you. And thank you so much for being here and listening to me through this call. Thank you so much.